Welcome to my Chapter 11 Pencast on Contingent Liabilities. As we make our way through Chapter 11, this is our next topic. What exactly is a contingent liability? Sometimes, in the normal course of business, you run into situations where you may or may not owe someone some money based on how something comes out. Consider a lawsuit. Someone sues you and you don't know how that's going to be adjudicated. Another example, one we'll use later on, is warranties. You have warrantied your product against defects. Is there a possibility that some of these warranties will in fact be used? How about IRS disputes? You're disputing how much you should pay in your federal income taxes with the IRS. And all three of these situations have in common is they may lead to a liability. We don't know at this time if they will or not, but the possibility exists. When do you record a liability in situations like this? Two things must be present. One, the amount of the liability must be made to be estimatable. You need to be able to estimate with some degree of assurance what the additional amount owed might be, or at least a range. And two, what is the likelihood of the outcome? When the likelihood of the outcome is all the way to probable, and you can estimate the amount of the liability, this leads to making a case for actually making a journal entry into the accounting records to recognize the liability. Dealing with the likelihood, there are three possibilities that are mentioned in the literature. That it will be adjudicated against you, the likelihood is remote, that it is reasonably possible, and the third one is all the way to probable. The accounting literature that's available discusses all three and when you can estimate the amount of the liability and when the likelihood of it being adjudicated against you is all the way to probable is when you make the journal entry. Let's use for an example one that you will do some homework on warranties. Let's say that you sell some merchandise in a year, $100,000 worth, and that through past experience you know that about 2% of these sales that you make, the products will have some kind of defective situation and you will need to do something to remedy the person that purchased it. History tells you that it's probable that this will happen and that the amount that is likely to be incurred is around 2%. Let's look at the journal entries. First, back up a bit. Record the journal entry to record sales. Maybe they were cash sales. Maybe they were accounts receivable. A little irrelevant to the discussion. Could be both. And then you recorded the sales revenue. Sure, there was inventory and cost of goods sold, but we'll stop with our journal entry here. And so you record the sales in an accounting period. As an adjusting entry, at the end of this period, you should make an entry to estimate what the warranty expense will be. In our case, we said it would be 2% or $2,000. And so at the end of the period, you should come through with an adjusting entry that says warranty expense and estimated warranty liability. And again, it's an estimate. But past experience shows us that it should run around $2,000. So you would make this adjusting entry. 
And what you've done is match an expense that you think will take place against the revenue that it generated in the same accounting period. So good matching. And you've set up a liability, a contingent liability, one that is probable to come about on your accounting records. Down the road, I'm sure that people will exercise their warranty with you. And perhaps in the first month after you have made this entry into your new accounting period, someone returns something. Let's suggest further that you just, in, in the warranty, said you'll give them another product. So when they actually return one, let's say it's $150 worth, you take it out of estimated warranty liability because you have already set this estimate up. You have accommodated this in the period and it was matched against sales. And you take it out of inventory or parts. However, you're making this warranty whole. What's important to note about this entry is it does not go into warranty expense. That happened in the adjusting entry. This comes out of the liability that you subsequently set up. In our example, we had sales, which we recorded in an accounting period. We had warranty expense, which we estimated and set up as an adjusting entry matched in the period that the sales took place. And then down the road, in future periods, when people actually exercise their right to this warranty, we just record the case that it, in fact, has taken place. We knew that it would happen. It was probable. And then experience shows us that, yes, in fact, it did happen down the road. The adjusting entry is where the expense comes from in all cases. Anytime a warranty is exercised, the debit is to estimated warranty liability, recognizing that some of what we thought would happen did in fact come to pass. Warranties are a great review of contingent liabilities. We know there's a possibility they exist. We can estimate them. It's probable that they will occur. We can use history to come up with an amount. We record the sales, we record the estimate, and then in the end, we record the usage. Again, not going to expense, but reducing the liability. Final question, always fun to ask. What's the balance in the warranty liability account immediately after this warranty was exercised? Always take the time to make a T account. Here we have our estimated warranty liability. And we think $2,000 will transpire in warranty expense over the next accounting cycle or a year. And in this case, 150 has had, has happened. The balance left to accommodate future usage is 1850 The debit coming from the liability and not going to the expense. Hey, thanks for joining me on this discussion of contingent liabilities.